Martha and Tomas drive to the Irish countryside. Their new home is near the coastline. The drive oversees the sea as the couple enjoy their journey together. Since they are moving to his hometown, Tomas talks about his life in the Irish countryside. They reach their new home, and Tomas escorts Martha inside to show her their new home. They look around until Martha realizes that she loves their new place. Tomas brings out an old cradle from his childhood. While Tomas is ecstatic, Martha is a bit disappointed. With her baby on the way, she wants new things for the baby, with this being their second attempt at becoming parents. Martha begins to settle in with some of their belongings. She pulls out a spinning toy. The toy invites sorrow from the past, making her zone out as she reminisces about her past tragedy. She is then interrupted by guests outside the house. Shay and Kat are outside, with their daughter Eva. They all exchange greetings, after which the group of friends all go inside. Martha goes to the kitchen for a glass of water. As she drinks, a little girl, Daisy, knocks on the window. Startled, Martha lets out a scream and drops her glass. Daisy then disappears, walking away and demanding that someone play with her. Martha follows her to the house next door, where Daisy plays with tins hanging on trees. Martha introduces herself, and Daisy does the same. Daisy is awkward, but she ignores Martha and returns to hitting tins with a stick. Suddenly, an old man comes from inside and throws a stone at Daisy. Daisy shrieks but walks away smiling. Martha tries to check up on Daisy, but the girl does not respond as she skips away. Tomas is a teacher, so he starts a job teaching high school students English in the local school. Martha is at a clinic, waiting for the doctor to see her. Orla introduces herself to Martha, a childhood crush of Tomas. She is there with her daughter Lucy. Orla welcomes her to the countryside, although she thinks Martha's life in London might have been more exciting. Martha feels better away from the city, having struggled to live life in London. The doctor meets with Martha. His first order of business is to ask more about Martha, revealing a history of cancer in her family. The doctor is not too concerned, so he moves on until Martha mentions her daughter Chloe, who passed away at three weeks old. The incident was two years ago, but she struggles with mental stability. The doctor reassures her that he will care for her and lets her leave. Martha goes home and meets up with Tomas. He is working on the cradle when Martha decides to confront him about Orla. Tomas dismisses anything between them, saying he cares only about his wife now. The next day, the couple is kindling a fire. Martha tries to greet Mr. Cryan, but he gives no response. The crying of a baby then catches her attention. She then notices the Gahan family hanging clean laundry outside. Their child, Jack, is crying, so the two parents take the child into their house. As the three go in, Martha notices Daisy running towards a cliff. Daisy is also from the Gahan family, but seems more free-spirited as she minds her own business. Seeing Daisy close to the cliff makes her instinctively warn the child to move away. Despite being so far away, Daisy appears to hear her as she goes back to their home. Meanwhile, their grumpy neighbor watches the child from afar, praying as if he sees the devil himself in her. Martha walks by the coastline alone during the day. She notices something in the water, so she walks towards it. The waves push the object to shore, revealing it. He is unresponsive, but Martha reaches pulls him out. She holds onto the ch after which Jenny Gahan's cries catch her attention. The mother screams in despair as she sees Martha keeps holding onto the body, sorrow written across her face. Tomas and Martha are at the police station for questioning. Martha is distressed, immensely bothered by what happened in front of her. Outside the station, the Gahan family has been brought for questioning as Jim Gahan takes Daisy inside, leaving Jenny to cry alone in the squad car. Tomas walks by, giving the woman a moment to grieve her lost child. Martha is inside the station washing her face when she hears Jenny crying in the other room. Jenny is holding but Daisy demands that she plays with her. Daisy goes to her father after being dismissed by her mother, still insisting that someone plays with her. The child is unable to process the Daisy plays on the tree by Mr. Cryan's house the next day. Jenny comes from afar as she keeps calling for her daughter. Martha enjoys Daisy's company, but Jenny is worried more for Martha, for some odd reason. Tomas and Jim also come by, only for Mr. Cryan to come out and shoo away the little girl. Mr. Cryan makes some crass comments about Daisy, prompting Jim to face up and hold the old man by the collar before being forced away. At night, the people of the town call out for Tomas, waking him up as there seems to be an emergency outside. The townsfolk are putting out a fire near the Gahan's residence. Martha asks about Daisy, but no one knows her whereabouts. Eventually, Daisy's screams catch Martha's attention. She goes to a shed, where the townsfolk try to talk to Daisy, but she is hysterical and unwilling to calm down. Martha then approaches Daisy herself, this time Daisy trusting the woman and hopping into her arms. Tomas and Martha then take Daisy away, while her parents burn in the fire behind them. Mr. Cryan appears again, wishing Daisy had perished with her family in the fire. The doctor examines Daisy for burn damage, but finds nothing wrong with her. He mentions that social workers will arrive later, so Martha decides to take care of Daisy for the night. Tomas and Martha prepare her for bed. While Martha cares deeply for the child, Tomas is more skeptical and stern about the situation, despite letting Martha look after the child. Tomas slept while looking after Daisy. He wakes up and finds the house in shambles, as Daisy has scattered all the food in the kitchen across the floor and furniture. Daisy eats porridge from a bag with her hands, unwilling to listen to Tomas as he tries to take the bag of porridge to cook for her. 
Lindsay, the social worker, comes by later to see that Daisy is put in foster care. There is a shortage of adequate homes, and Daisy has no known extended family, making her situation dire. Martha offers that the couple look after the orphan child for a while, but Tomas hesitates. Daisy hears this and cowers into a corner, realizing she is about to be taken away. Lindsay tries to take Daisy with her, but Daisy starts screaming repeatedly. She keeps going until Martha comes to calm her down, after which Daisy finally regains composure. The social worker realizes that Daisy will be problematic to take with her, so she lets Martha keep her for a couple of days. Lindsay drives away from the town while Daisy plays with her business card. The car skids along the sharp turns until Daisy flips Lindsay's business card over the edge. Simultaneously, Lindsay's car tips over the road and crashes. Tomas goes to Gahan's estate, finding Daisy living in the shed. Sergeant Riley explains that the house fire was triggered due to fuel being thrown around the house. The sergeant is more concerned about a mythical connection with the incident. Superstition dictates that the fire took place in a fairy ring on Halloween night, making it a bad omen, according to local mythology. Daisy and Martha go to the church for the Gahan's family funeral the next day. Daisy is reminded of the fire after seeing the caskets of her parents, so Martha takes away the child while Tomas sticks around for the funeral. Later, Martha tries to help Daisy feel better, enforcing that she should be proud of her appearance. Daisy struggles initially, but she respects Martha and agrees with her anyway. Eva and Kat come by Tomas and Martha's house. Daisy has a tug-of-war battle with Eva, trying to take her doll. Despite Eva's efforts, and Tomas demanding that Daisy give the doll back, Kat lets Daisy keep the doll, as no one can control the orphan girl without Martha. Later at night, Martha and Daisy are playing with the doll together. They decide on the name Eddie for the baby, as Martha instructs Daisy to put the baby to sleep. Martha is trying to teach Daisy about how to raise a child. When Daisy covers the baby's face with the blanket, Martha corrects her and fixes the blanket. She talks more about her pregnancy, clarifying that she wants Daisy around to be an older sister to her child. The police finally find Lindsay's car. With their finding, they make sure to contact Tomas and Martha. The couple is at home going about their day when Tomas gets the phone call. Martha and Daisy are painting when Daisy kisses Martha on the lips. Tomas borrows his wife for a moment to inform her about Lindsay's passing, prompting them to drive Daisy to the care home. The drive to the care home is quiet and sad as Martha does not want to let go of Daisy. Tomas is more than prepared as he takes the initiative and escorts the child inside. They wait in silence in the waiting area, where the people at the facility try to familiarize themselves with Daisy, but she is uninterested. The people take her away, only for Daisy to scream and shout for Martha. The couple takes her back, with Daisy unwilling to stay at the care home. Tomas is disappointed, but Martha is more optimistic and happier with the outcome. At night, Tomas finds Daisy's new doll, with its face covered by the blanket again. For Tomas, this just makes the child even more unlikable to him, with his own child on the way. The couple researches more into Daisy's uniqueness, finding that she has autism. They realize that while people with autism struggle with physical and eye contact, Daisy does not have those issues with Martha. The next day, Martha takes Daisy to the playground. Tomas is still skeptical about the child, so he takes a rain check and lets his wife take the girl to the playground alone. Mr. Cryan, meanwhile, looks over the couple's house, closely watching Daisy. After their trip to the playground, the couple takes Daisy to the police station. The cops ask about the child's experience in the fire that took her parents' life. Daisy does not give any straight answers, but discloses that someone tried to harm her during the incident. Without giving more information, the couple and the child are allowed to leave. Tomas comes home to find social service employees meeting with Martha. They prepare to leave when they greet Tomas, with Martha escorting them out. Martha comes back to her husband, finally telling him that she applied for them to foster Daisy. Tomas becomes more irritated, asking if their deceased daughter has anything to do with this obsession with the orphan. Martha does not feel that way, as she convinces him otherwise by saying she just likes Daisy and the child needs their support. With Martha and Tomas now fostering the child, Martha takes her to school the next morning. The day starts normally, with Martha feeling ecstatic to experience taking her daughter to school for the first time. Their relationship is now strongly that of a mother and daughter. They head back home together as Daisy frolics around in her fairy costume. Later that night, Mr. Crying comes to the couple's house to talk to Tomas. He starts going on about Daisy again, but Tomas cannot bear with the conversation the moment Mr. Crying suggests that there is something wrong with Martha now too. Tomas prohibits their grumpy neighbor from ever setting foot on their property and goes inside. As he does so, Mr. Crying gives one final warning to Tomas to never deny the child any request she makes. Tomas gives no response and heads inside. Suddenly, someone spits on the old man's face. Mr. Cryan looks around and realizes that Daisy is behind the saliva on his cheek. Horrified, he immediately goes back home to scrub his cheeks clean, rigorously trying to remove any trace of the child from his face. The following day, Martha, Daisy, Eva, and Kat go to the public swimming pool. Daisy sits alone, away from the water, while the other three swim inside. Martha tries to invite Daisy in, but Daisy does not want to swim. Meanwhile, Daisy looks at Eva in envy as she notices that Martha is having a fun time with a child other than herself. In the changing room, Daisy and Eva are sitting together while the adults get ready to leave. 
Daisy squeezes Eva's pool float to the point that it deflates. Later, the children are unsupervised, leaving Daisy to escort Eva back to the swimming pool. Martha realizes the girls are missing, so she immediately leaves the locker room to look for them. Eventually, she finds them at the swimming pool, where she sees Eva's pool float in the water. Noticing the child is underwater, she immediately shouts for the lifeguard to save Eva from the water. The lifeguard gets there in time, but the situation makes Martha more worried about Daisy. As Daisy and Martha leave the facility, one of the women from the town refers to Daisy as a changeling to Cat. Strangely, upon hearing the word, Cat starts projectile vomiting. Tomas comes to pick up his wife and Daisy. Martha is unwilling to explain exactly what happened, but Tomas is more concerned about the situation. His wife is set on blaming herself, as she believes that her irresponsibility caused the incident, but Tomas rushes to Cat for answers and to check up on her. Tomas talks to her, but she is more concerned about the townspeople referring to Daisy as a changeling. Tomas is in disbelief, as the woman wants to blame the accident on superstition. Cat is uninterested, leaving Tomas without a clear answer. Martha is insistent that the just an accident. Tomas realizes his wife will not answer directly, so he asks Daisy about the incident. Noticing that Martha referred to it as such, she also calls it an accident. They finally reach home. As the car halts, Daisy immediately runs out and away from the house. Martha gets out of the car and starts apologizing profusely, but Tomas runs after her. Despite being against the child, Tomas is good-natured enough to understand that Daisy is still very young, so he tries to be friendly and eventually convinces her to return home with him. The following day, Tomas and Martha go for an ultrasound. They see their son, Daniel, from the ultrasound. The couple are both happy, but Martha is a bit more distracted. Later on, Martha goes to Mr. Cryan. She enters his house and finds the old man's face in a horrible condition. He blames Daisy for the injury on his face, but immediately gets distracted by the little girl as he demands the child leave the property. After he gets increasingly irritated, Martha realizes that she and Daisy should leave the man alone. Tomas checks up on Mr. Cryan later. Their neighbors promise to see a doctor. But he also explains to Tomas how he believes that Daisy is a fairy. Martha does not believe him for one second as she reads a picture book showing different images of fairies. Martha realizes that most people in town have the same perception, looking at her in strange judgmental ways. The town is backward because of how they still believe in superstition. A fairy changeling replaces someone's real human daughter, with the only way to revert them being burning the mystical creature on Halloween. Martha further loses her faith in the people around her. Martha has a surprise for Daisy. Martha takes her to their expected baby's old room now completely redecorated to be Daisy's room. Daisy is expressionless, but happy with the changes in her new room, especially the wallpaper they all put together. Shay and Kat are at the hospital. Kat has given birth, so Tomas and Martha visit the hospital to congratulate them. Tomas waits outside with Daisy in the car, while Martha visits the couple and their infant inside. Martha discloses that Tomas is not in with her as he sits with Daisy, thinking it best, with how the town thinks poorly of her. Meanwhile, Kat offers Martha the opportunity to hold the baby, to which she complies, letting her love for children show as usual. While waiting for his wife, Tomas closes his eyes and falls asleep. Daisy walks into the hospital, since Tomas is currently unaware of his surroundings. Eventually, he wakes up to find Daisy missing, so he goes inside the hospital to ensure nothing goes wrong, clearly skeptical about Daisy's innocence. Daisy enters the room with the newborn infant. With the mother asleep, she reaches for the baby in the cot and picks him up. His mother eventually awakens and realizes the girl is in the room with her baby. She politely asks for her son back, but Daisy looks at the woman smugly as she yields no response. Tomas finally comes to the room, getting Daisy to let go of the child. Daisy can detect when Martha interacts with other children, her actions being some strange revenge for Martha's attention. Martha then enters herself, trying to defend Daisy, but eventually realizes that Kat is too frightened to understand and takes the orphan girl with her to the car. Tomas holds the baby now. With the baby in his arms, he thinks back on his deceased child. While Tomas appears to be calm and collected husband that takes care of Martha through all her stress and worries, it seems that he never had the opportunity to truly grieve his own daughter's passing. He begins to break down, realizing that he is still worried, because their past trauma is possibly coming back to haunt them again. Martha and Daisy are walking to school the next morning, where the rest of the students and the parents are waiting outside. Daisy does not want to go inside, as she realizes the others have caught on to the rumors and become wary of her. Martha is insistent they go at first, but eventually turns back after Daisy's constant protests. Tomas comes back to the house and finds no one home. He looks around and calls out to his wife, but hears no response. He heads to Daisy's room, where Daisy pops out of the blue and startles him. Tomas takes a moment to recover before asking about what is happening. Martha joins Tomas outside in the corridor to discuss what just unfolded. Tomas is fed up with Martha's obsession with Daisy, realizing that his wife is completely lost in Daisy and forgetting about their upcoming child. Martha goes on about the mythology behind Changeling, explaining that the logic behind burning such children stemmed from people's inability to care for unwanted children in their households. Eventually, Tomas shuts her down entirely, asking about the name of their future child. Martha has no answer for her husband, so Tomas just lets her be and leaves her with her thoughts. Tomas goes to a bar to drink. He meets Orla as the two of them are drinking beer. 
Orla talks about the rumors about Daisy in town, but dismisses any truth to the stories. Orla is surprised by how the couple took on a child like Daisy, but Tomas corrects her, still insistent that Daisy is not there to stay. Orla drives Tomas back to the house, as he seems too drunk to get back. Orla stops the car outside as the two reminisce about their youth and the relationship they could have had. The tension builds up as the two eventually start kissing each other. Orla stops midway, realizing she is wrecking a marriage and exploiting a drunk man. Tomas still loves his wife, so he leaves and doesn't look back on what just happened. The following day, a bunch of kids come to play with Daisy. The group asks nicely at first, but eventually, one of the kids pulls out a toy gun and threatens Daisy into coming along with them. The group of kids starts mocking Daisy and her reputation as a fairy until, eventually, Daisy starts scaring them and forces them all back. They eventually reach the cliff's edge but are saved by Mr. Cryan, helping them escape. The old man then demands that Daisy return home, but instead, she shouts back at him, asking the same thing. Mr. Cryan is scared immensely by her, so he just walks away and goes home. At school, none of the parents want their children to be around Daisy as the rumors about her being a fairy have frightened everyone in the countryside. Meanwhile, Orla is rushing to the hospital with her child. Tomas comes to visit and see how Orla and her daughter are doing. Orla asks about Daisy's health, but Tomas is more concerned about Lucy. Lucy and all the children that were with Daisy all got meningitis. Upon hearing that Daisy is not sick, Orla is insistent that something strange is happening and seems to now feed into the rumors that something is fundamentally wrong with the orphan girl. The conversation is disrupted by the blaring of an alarm in the emergency room, steering Orla away as she goes to address her daughter's health. Martha reads a story to put Daisy to sleep as Tomas waits for his wife at the door. He walks away to the kitchen and begins a serious conversation with his wife. The sergeant came to see Tomas to discuss Daisy's antics at the cliff. Then Tomas mentions the children all catching meningitis. Martha can only follow the conversation once Tomas explains his unwillingness to keep Daisy in the family. He becomes increasingly frustrated, demanding that she make a choice, only for Daisy to interrupt the conversation and take Martha away. The next morning, Mr. Cryan is outside collecting firewood and preparing a bonfire. Daisy is awake before Martha, seated in a rocking chair and seemingly in anticipation. Mr. Cryan prepares a hole with firewood and pours petrol all over it before covering the hole up. Later on, Martha places pictures and clothes of her deceased child. Daisy comes to the room and tries playing with the pictures, but Martha repeatedly protests and tells her away. Eventually, Daisy reveals that she knows Tomas does not approve of her, so she suggests that she and Martha leave the house together. Mr. Cryan is walking around with a bunch of tins, as he seemingly wants Daisy to follow him. Daisy enjoys messing around with the old man, so she follows along. Meanwhile, Martha is worried sick looking for Daisy. She meets Tomas on the road, where he escorts her inside the car to look for Daisy. Realizing that his wife's obsession will not go away, he is trying his best to be there for her. Daisy eventually walks along the plains, where tins are placed in a path, as if to lure her away. At the same time, the sergeant and Tomas are still looking for the orphan girl. Eventually, Daisy finds the last bunch of tins near a shed, where Mr. Cryan takes his stand against the child. The old man appears with a shovel from inside the shed, using it to push Daisy away and into the trap he laid out before. The rescue party eventually finds Mr. Cryan and his contraption. They rush towards the old man, first forcing him away, and then trying to pull the little girl out. Mr. Cryan lights a match to start a fire in the hole he trapped Daisy in, but traces of fuel on him catch fire instead. The sergeant and Tomas eventually pry open the trap and let Daisy out, but Mr. Cryan burns away in the background, as he succumbs to the flames he set himself. The doctor checks up on Daisy and informs Martha that she is fine. The doctor advises moving away, but Martha seems fed up with the situation as she dismissively continues the conversation. She is still more worried about Daisy. Later, Martha, Tomas and the sergeant have a conversation about Daisy. Tomas and the sergeant want a place for Daisy where the caregivers are more experienced. Martha is adamant in her ability to give the child a proper home. Her husband and the sergeant keep trying to convince Martha to let go of the child. She leaves the room and pretends to make a coffee, until the conversation gets more serious and the sergeant reveals a situation in the Gahan family. When Jack was born, Jenny found Daisy trying to smother her brother. The aftermath of such a situation meant that the parents were careful about Daisy. On the day of Jack's someone unlocked Jack's room and led him into the sea, where he met his inevitable demise. Upon hearing such a story, Martha becomes more understanding, now willing to listen to the sergeant and his suggestion. He has already contacted social services, but Martha does not want to let go of the child immediately, demanding that the girl is given one more night with Martha. The cop agrees and lets the couple spend one last night with the orphan girl. As Daisy sleeps, Tomas quietly packs her belongings and places them outside. Martha is speechless as she gets ready for her bath. With her horrible condition, Tomas walks over to his wife to comfort her, but leaves afterward for some work outside the house. Tomas is fixing up the cradle for the baby in the shed. Daisy wakes up and leaves the room, after seeing her belongings stowed in the corner. She realizes her faith as she sits by the wall with her back. As Martha gets ready to bathe, Daisy walks into the bathroom. 
She makes one final effort to ask Martha to let her stay with the couple. Martha does not answer, instead offering to bathe her. For the first time, Martha doubts Daisy's innocence, as she begins questioning the child about her involvement with strange occurrences around the town. Eventually Daisy confesses, admitting to being the one responsible for the passing of her brother as well as pushing Eva overboard into the water during their swimming pool visit. Daisy eventually snaps, starting to sing rock by baby. Daisy finally admits she is a fairy, but latches onto Martha's pregnant belly. Martha struggles, but her water breaks and she cannot push the child away. Eventually, she falls over and screams for her husband to save her, but Tomas is busy elsewhere. Martha asks Daisy to get help, but the girl no longer cares for what Martha has to say as she leaves her behind on the bathroom floor. Tomas eventually finishes the cradle, drying the paint and returning it to the house. He places it on the bed before looking around the house for his wife. He eventually sees her on the floor in the bathroom, completely lifeless. The man starts sobbing as he screams over his wife's corpse, hearing Daisy sing nursery rhymes. Tomas retraces the sound to the bedroom, demanding the child explain herself. Tomas has lost his temper, but eventually regains his composure when he hears the voice of an infant. Daisy delivered his child and set him in the cradle, obeying everything Martha taught her about taking care of a baby. Tomas picks up his baby and yields no response to the child. He slowly stares at the child as he takes his baby and leaves the room. With Daisy alone, she takes her doll and places it in the cradle. She covers the baby's face this time, explicitly mentioning that it should not be able to breathe. Having snapped, she begins to sing Rockabye Baby one last time. 